in a world in 2020, the year 2021, there was one phone. No, not that one. One of the phones that I happened to own at the time of this filming and needed content, but it stood above the rest, figuratively, because it was small. And then there was a review, seven months after everybody else already posted one. This is the iPhone 12 mini. It's an iPhone. It's mini a chair. <clears throat> it's small. It's the 12th iPhone that Apple has released. Wait, hold on. iPhone 1, uh, 3, 3, 6S, 10, or was it pronounced X? It's like an iPhone, but smaller, and I like it. The iPhone 12 mini was cheered by the masses when it was announced by Apple. Then pretty much no one bought it. But you don't care about that because some people don't want tablets for phones, and you might be one of them. I like small phones with one-handed usage, and this one has it for days or inches. The phone was released at $699 in November of 2020, but now it's been out for seven months, so you can pick it up for uh, $699. But now it comes in purple. This gets you 64 gigabytes of storage. Wait, they're still shipping with a base of 64 gigabytes? You can double the storage for $50 extra, and I highly recommend that you do, if you can afford it. But don't worry, you can get $80 off when you trade in your janky iPhone 7. But keep your charger, because Apple is environmentally friendly now and doesn't include the charging brick in the box. The phone is 5.4 inches, which my girlfriend tells me is big, and you really shouldn't be ashamed. Really, it's completely normal. You get the latest A14 Bionic chipset, which is the fastest processor in a phone today, it can handle pretty much anything you want to do on the phone, even intensive stuff. It's the same processor as the iPhone 12 Pro Max, which is pretty cool. The front glass is now called Ceramic Shield, which provides much better drop resistance but still scratches pretty easily, so get a screen protector. The body has a new design, no, not that body, with sharp, flat corners. I think it looks nicer than the older rounded corners, but it makes the edges a little sharp to hold. Let's see, what else, what else? Uh, oh, it's got 5G now. Do with that what you will. It's a little bit faster, but nothing crazy. It still uses Face ID, which is actually not that bad, but sucks if you're half asleep or wearing a mask. It's got IP68 water resistance, so you can just run it through the dishwasher when it gets too dirty. Yeah, d never mind. Don't, don't do that. The phone packs a wide and ultra-wide camera, and they are really good. I'm the best there is, plain and simple. It actually uses the same cameras as the bigger iPhone 12, and guess what? I'm using that to record this video. Surprise, motherfucker! You can shoot 4K in Dolby Vision HDR, which is a thing my TV has, so it has to be good. Colors are brighter, pictures just look better. Just remember that this version of iPhone 12 can only shoot in 4K HDR at 30 seconds and not 60. I'm not sure why, but yeah, that's a thing on this phone. It takes great low light pictures. Just look at these. The front selfie camera also takes pictures, but I think those are going out of style, right? Anybody? Guess what else? They put a magnet on the back. Well, it's, it's in the back. So now you can stick it to stuff like wireless chargers, wallets, cases, but don't worry, you can still use that cheap wireless charger you bought on Amazon. The Mini has a bottom facing and front facing speaker, and they both sound really good in stereo, but are lacking in the mids and lows. A little quieter than the larger iPhones, but better than most other phones. If there's one thing Apple gets right, it's audio. I have to say that I've been disappointed with the battery. Given its small size, I wasn't expecting miracles, but I was really hoping that Apple could use its tightly integrated software to pull off a miracle. Okay, I guess I was expecting a little too much, but yeah, it's definitely not an all-day battery. I'm a very conservative user, and I was still running on empty by the end of each day. Power users will definitely have to top off at some point during the day. But it also charges really quickly because the battery is so small, so top-offs don't take very long. It can fast charge it up to 20 watts and wirelessly charge it up to 15 watts with MagSafe chargers or 7.5 watts with your cheap Amazon ones. 
Don't let that keep you from buying the phone, but don't expect it to defy physics either. So why buy it? Because it's still awesome. Small premium phones are becoming super rare, and this is one of the strongest mini phones ever released. People love iPhones, and I never really understood why before when I used strictly Android. But after buying the 12 and 12 mini, I kind of get it. They're super easy to use. Even my grandma is an iPhone master. Hi, grandma. Everything just works. They hold the resale value like crazy. They have FaceTime and iMessage. They have awesome solid builds and feel premium. They have good speakers and Apple Pay. They integrate seamlessly with AirPods and HomePods and Apple TV and Apple Watches. They have Siri. Uh, forget about that one. They get software updates for like four or five years minimum. This is a really good phone. So if you have tiny hands or are just sick of trying to fit an iPad in your skinny jeans, check out the Mini, even in 2021. It's really good and should continue to be for years to come. If $699 feels a bit too steep with new iPhones due out in the next four to five months, and it is, check out the used market. You can find one in excellent shape for around $500 and I buy a lot of phones used. That's all I've got for today. Come back for another video in like a week or like a month. Thanks for stopping by everyone. I hope you have a great day.